In November, a music festival was held in Hong Kong's West Kowloon. The famed Korean soprano Sumi Jo performed at the opening ceremony, along with classical and pop musicians from Hong Kong. This event was organized by the Hong Kong Generation Next Arts, a charity founded by Michelle Kim, who is a highly regarded pianist herself, and she is our guest for this week's Touch Basins Hall. To tell us more about her career and her charity work, she joins us via video now. Ms. Kim, hello, and thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to have your wonderful program. Thank you. Yes, it is wonderful to have you on the show. As you mentioned, uh, you are a pianist yourself. You grew up in Korea. In fact, I believe you started training from a very young age of four. Can you tell us a bit more about how you got started? I think my story is probably typical child of um, young pianist who started very young. Um, you know, the parents were very much passionate about music and I was very much influenced by that. And um, I was always around music. They, my father was a businessman, but he loved, loved music. And so was my mom. So, you know, since the music is all around me and I really react to it. So I, they knew and they spotted that I was talented. So I started piano when I was four and with other instruments as well. Mm. And um, that's how that started. Right. As you said, uh, you are undoubtedly talented. Uh, you made your orchestral debut with this whole Philharmonic at just 10 years old as well, which is quite remarkable. Uh, but I understand that you actually also found it quite difficult to deal with perhaps some of the stresses that came with playing piano at such a high level as you were growing up, right? That's correct. Um, it's, it requires a high level of perfectionism and also incredible discipline uh, as well as um, you need a lot of support from parents as well as teachers. So you know going in, um, once you're in that circle, of competitive um, circle, who are supposedly the talented kids, um, you know, you're always surrounded by that. And sometimes you're inspired by it, sometimes you're encouraged by it, but a lot of times because you are, since young age, you need to be subjected to such a perfectionism that it can um, leave some of negative impact. Uh, negative impact. Mm. Um, but um, I think in the beginning, I actually enjoy being competitive and enjoy being on stage. Um, so for instance, my debut with the soul, Phil, um, you know, playing Mozart concerto, it's still a, still a favorite concerto of mine. And um, it's, it gives you um, such a new insight to performing with the orchestra and listening to different instruments. So I quite enjoy that a lot. But mm. once you get into that circle, uh, you need to spend lots of time, like 10 hours a day, and you need to be locked up in the practice room. So, you know, you can't help but being one-sided and you can't help but being um, kind of trapped in the circle of practicing, perfecting, and um, Good and bad. Um, this high discipline is amazing. Mm. Um, I still have it, and I, I think that's the reason. That's one of my tools for life that I carry forth. However, mm. at this time of like puberty and teenagers, it you know you have to maneuver yourself very well, and and you need to uh, surround yourself with the loving and nurturing people and teachers and and um, support systems. So it, it's it's. Just like anything, <laughs> excessive can be um, negative. It could leave a negative impact. Sure. But you know, music in itself is such a gift for life. So I always have that in me. However, um, just like in anything else, um, highly, highly, perf when something requires highly perfectionism in every possible concert and performance, um, it's it's hard to. Um, take that sometimes you know so that that was not easy for me but um but in hindsight that gave me strength so sure there is a very uh moving talk 
uh, that's available to watch online that I believe you did back in 2013, where uh, you talk more about your uh, struggles with the pressure you dealt with back then. And I do recommend our listeners to uh, check that out as well, as you do speak so eloquently and movingly and also amusingly about your experiences as well. Still, you did manage to study at the prestigious uh, Juilliard School in New York. You ended up performing in major concert halls around uh, the world in your career, including Carnegie Hall and the Lincoln Center and uh, with your performances also being televised in the US, Europe and South Korea. Uh, did you enjoy that part of your career more as well as you uh, later on in your life? I, I enjoyed it all. Uh, I, I must say that the performing parts, um, you know, experience different culture and meeting different audiences. Um, it's such a joy. However, um, you know, to to sometimes carry that um, that part, that wounded part. I mean, I was in my TED talk. Um, I hope I hope that your viewers could watch that as well because it has a good and bad. Um, but that was my journey of uh, becoming who I am today. And um, I think once you're trapped in the circle of being competitive and being number one and and just like in anything, if you want to be the best as you can be, um, you know, there's no room for a failure. There's no room for being a second mm. prize or being second best. So then there's no room for sharing. But then again, music is meant for sharing. And that's that was my journey of going and, and performing. Mm. I realized once you kind of cross over that circle of professionals, uh, being a professional pianist, then you realize, wow, it's not really about being perfect, but it's actually about connecting with the audience. Mm. It's about um, sharing what's in your heart, what's who you are. So um, I share a little bit about, you know, the negative impact. Like I would have a habit of kind of like giving, try to control something. So then I would scratch myself. But, you know, I think that every um, student, like high schoolers could, um, especially ones in Korea, could really relate to that because going into college exam, such a pressure. It's not just music, but in anything, such a pressuring environment. Um, there's a lot of things can be happening emotional and spiritual and physical. And we're intricate beings. So um, I think in some ways music really kept me sane. Mm. But then it's not the music in itself, but it's myself. And mm. it's the how I dealt with my surrounding. So concertizing, I, I loved it very much. And then I think that that's the way I re fell in love with music and how I really thought, wow, this is, that's the true beauty of music, not being perfect, but actually connecting and sharing. So um, I think that's how I got to change my mind and change about like who I am and how, what I want to do in life. Sure. So music is for sharing. I think that's a wonderful sentiment. Uh, with that in mind, uh, you eventually moved to Hong Kong, where you're based now. And in 2009, you founded uh, Hong Kong Generation Next Arts, the charity we mentioned at the start. It is a Hong Kong charity dedicated to helping young artists and changing lives through music. Can you tell us more about this organization and what led you to establish it? Well, it's actually an interesting story. Um, I was... 2009, I, I always tell people I had two, two children. Uh, one was actual, my first um, born son, um, my only son at that. Um, and I had a very difficult childbirth and because I, I nearly died, it was very, very difficult hmm. labor. And I, I, I really pray to God that please let me be okay and let me live. And if my baby's okay, I won't just live for myself. I will, I will use my talent to do something for the community or my surrounding. Um, and I, I thought that, um, you know, I, I, I pray and I was okay after a few months later. But then the opportunity presented itself after a few months later. Uh, my son was born in May and um, I found the charity in December. Going through that, um, I was bedridden because I was very, very sick. So then you know, pianist that I was, I always practiced most of the time and mm. and I couldn't sit still because I, I, I had to lie down and I really had to internalize who I am, what I want to do and what I pray for. And then meanwhile, I was going to church um, and this church that I was going to in Hong Kong, um, you know, she's a UK 
British missionary who served in Hong Kong, and um, she had a rehab center who, which is um, you know they're they're rehabilit well they're healed by the faith and mm. um, they some of them are drug addicts some of them are ex gangster kids, but um, she just met me and then say well you know I know that you're a pianist. So mm, then, right. you know, I heard that you want to serve and would you teach my boys? So I was, that's not quite what I had in mind at the time. <laughs> I was thinking more like, you know, um, doing something or maybe mentoring kids sure. who are, um, you know, a similar background. I didn't know that I had to leap that much to, um, to that degree, but um, I did pray. So I follow what I saw said and I obeyed and I thought I could just kind of disappear after a month because I had my child and um, my child was only four months old. Sure. So then, um, you know, they we developed a bond. So that kind of led to HKG and a Hong Kong Generation Next Arts because I, I realized that, wow, I really can do something for mm. the community. If I could connect with these kids who are you know, risk youth, um, they're the delinquents, what they say, and they kind of passed away and kind of gave up. But then I really connected through music, the power of music. Mm. So I thought, wow, I could really do this for the community. And why not do it for bigger scale and, and with a charity that, right. um, so, so that's, that's the, the, actually the way, way I founded the Hong Kong Generation Next Stars in 2009, December. Mm. So um, that's the beginning of HKGNA. Right, and it's been 13 years now since then. And yes. uh, it's. we wanted to first also talk about uh, the music festival that you held uh, last yes. month uh, with soprano Chosumi. It was uh, under the theme Music on the Harbour Front, and it starred right. classical music musicians, including the uh, HKGNA Music Festival Youth Orchestra, also Canto Pop Stars as well. It sounds like it was quite a special and meaningful event. What did this event mean for you? And looking back 13 years, uh, what does it all mean to you, this charity? I think we are pretty unique and special. And also I feel uh, immense pride that um, not only we embrace the underprivileged and our disadvantaged youth, but we could also present the greatest soprano of our time, um, soprano Sumi Joe. So that's the power of um, music. And through power of music, we could break down boundaries, whether you are the super superstar of superstar and the disadvantaged youth. So we also presented the autistic pianist and the blind pianist. And, um, you know, this is our ninth festival. Uh, our first festival, Chong Myungha, Chelup Chelis Myungha Chang, and also the uh, Son Yarum, uh, Kang Jumi, all the greatest classical superstar has come and present. We have presented and we're so grateful. And also Richard Yongje Onye. But this year was especially, um, we are so proud that we were able to do this outdoor event, um, three day outdoor event, film and music. Mm. And this was supported by the Tourism Board of Hong Kong. And, um, you know, a lot of Hong Kong people in general really support it. And I have to say that, you know, we are in, we're deeply grateful to the Culture Center, Hong Kong Korean Culture Center, and uh, also Chong Yong Sagwan, uh, Korean uh, Consulate General in Hong Kong, for their continued support since the beginning. So um, I, I have to say, you know, I, I think that, you know, as I'm getting older, and I'm the founder, but, you know, as I'm getting older, I truly feel like sure. I'm so proud to be Korean. And I feel like whatever I do, I carry my being Koreanness, you know, where fears will do all the way, like, you know, all the way, even though there is a lot of, uh, you know, the factors of uncertainty, like pandemic in Hong Kong, there's a mm. quarantine of the, the Koreas, um, you know, right. when they were all lifted, we still were living under the quarantine. So I think that the, the belief and the faith and um, the Koreanness really, I, I carry forth, and right. now we're living in a time of K culture being the forefront in the in the worldwide. Mm. I feel it, and I I right. think that I am one of them to feel so proud to be Korean and 
And I think that people just just love what we have to present it. So Soprano Sumi Jo came right. and people loved her. Even the <laughs> pop star um, sure. fans. She got a lot of mm. pop star fans. Um, and that we, we and that's another thing about uh, you know our festival that we we do crossover. Miss Kim, we unfortunately, we yes. are running out of time. Uh, oh, but you are okay. clearly yeah. very passionate and very. Uh, uh, you believe in what you do and it is amazing to see and uh, it sounds like it was an amazing event and we wish you all the best for your future events as well. Uh, we'll be speaking with a pianist and the founder of the Hong Kong Generation Next Arts a charity, Michelle Kim. Thank you once again for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>